On this week's episode, I'm joined by Tomás Appleton. Tomás is born and raised in Portugal. He's a dentist, he's studying to become a doctor, and he's the captain of the Portuguese national rugby team, only the second team to ever qualify for the Rugby World Cup. We discuss, amongst other things, all the things that Tomás loves about his country, dental and medical care in Portugal, and the incredible story of how Tomás and his teammates qualified for the Rugby World Cup for only the second time in Portuguese history. For those of you listening, head over to our YouTube channel to watch some of this episode. And for those of you watching, click down below and subscribe. And for the full podcast episode, go to Stitcher, Spotify, Apple Podcasts, and Google, or wherever you get your podcasts. And now, over to my conversation with Tomás. Welcome back or welcome to another episode of Portugal The Simple Life and it's an honor to be joined here by Tomás Appleton. It's two names that normally I wouldn't put together, Tomás and Appleton, but Tomás, uh, thank you for being on the podcast. How are you? Thank you. I'm really good. Thank you very much for having thank, me. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. Uh, you've got a super busy life uh, that we're going we're gonna, to we're gonna get into as and a baby. So uh, it's it's hectic. I know I've got a four year old, and uh, it's life is life has never been the same. Um, but maybe you can start off, Thomas, telling us a little bit a little bit about you. Ah, okay. So me, who am I? Uh, I'm a 29 uh, year old guy uh, from Lisbon. I was born and raised uh, here in Lisbon. Uh, lived with with my parents all my life till three years ago. That I moved in with my with my girlfriend. Uh, we have a baby, so I'm a father of one little girl. That it's one year now, one year and two months. Congrats! More exactly. Uh, that's just that's just me. It's a good place to start. Um, you're the current captain of the the Portuguese rugby team. So, man, congratulations about for qualifying for the Rugby World Cup. Thank you very it's much. amazing. We will we'll talk a bit more about that. Um, Tomás, tell us a little bit about about Lisbon. It's 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 a it's a city that everybody knows these days. Uh, it's become well known throughout the world, um, but it's still quite a special place uh, in a special country. Um, what do you want people to know about your your city, and what do you enjoy about living where you live? It's hard. It's hard not to say this, but I think it's the best city in the world. I've lived. I've lived abroad, and um, whereabouts? So I lived in England. I was okay. playing National One in 2015-16. Okay. So yeah, I lived there. I lived in New Zealand as well because I went on an exchange program to play rugby uh, when I was 18. And I've been all around. I've been to. I've played with the sevens national team. So I played the World Circuit. I've traveled a lot uh, with rugby, with family, with friends, with with my wife. So I've been all around, and I have a lot of I have plenty of comparison uh, places and. You cannot get something like Lisbon. It's it's just special. Yeah, yeah. We're we're gonna talk about rugby because if I start, I won't stop. Uh, <laughs> I, I get very few opportunities to speak about rugby these days. So it's thank you for giving me the opportunity to 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 relive my past as well. But um, uh, you mentioned Lis Lisbon and and you know obviously in a broader context, Portugal. This this quality of life. Um, have been becoming a dad obviously puts that into another perspective as well. Um, but what do you think it is? What do you think? Um, yeah. What do you think it is about this place that, that gives us such a good quality of life and, and, um, and, uh, and, uh, just being a wonderful place to live in general. Putting stuff into perspective. I think there are some different factors that make, that make sense. I think the weather it's, it's, you cannot, it's hard to get better than this. And I don't know if it's just theory or it happens uh, really, but the sun gets people happy. Uh, and I feel that Portuguese people are happy people. And that gets us into a, a different context, context, that it's people. People in Portugal, I think, people in Portugal is, are really friendly. Uh, I'm not sure if you uh, agree with me, but yeah. I think people in Portugal are just... Just want to be, just want to be friendly with with everyone. Uh, yeah, I mean, I think I think um, it's the parts of Portugal that that are so sort of undiscovered, and yeah. you go you go to those places like you mentioned Serpa, and and I feel the same about where I live. I'm I'm north of of Lisbon, so on the Silver Coast near to Nazaré and San Martinho yeah. de Porto, and yeah, you yeah, kind of feel like you get this real 
window into what Portugal is and the people yeah, exactly. and the lifestyle and it's it's special. Yeah, for sure. I'm gonna say you're probably one of the most the busiest guys that I've ever interviewed on the podcast. <laughs> um uh, we're gonna get to the rugby side of things, but I mean you're also you're a dentist and you're studying to be a doctor as well, right? Exactly. Jeez, it's a lot. <laughs> it's a lot. Yeah, it's a lot. But yeah, with managing with a good time management, I think. Yeah. Um, my day job is is real estate and and bringing clients to to Portugal, and most of our most of my clients are from from overseas. One of the questions that they they often ask about is is stuff like medical care and dental and that kind of thing. They're in good hands in Portugal. I mean, what do you want to say about the the system here and how things work? I think there are two different things. So we have dentistry and. Uh, dentistry in Portugal is a lot of private care, mostly it's, private. It's yeah, of, yeah, work a lot of a lot in private, and then you have the um, national healthcare with the doctors and everything. Mm -hmm. With that, you can choose. You can you always have uh, the access to the um, with, with the general medicine. You always have the access to the national healthcare system. He has some. He has great doctors. He has great quality. But I think the process still needs improvement. You have some lack of specialists in some areas. Apart from it, dentistry is a really private focused uh, area. You have, to be honest, one of the best dental uh, medicine in the world. You have some of the best professionals in the world that are world uh, recognized. So I think if you want to move to Portugal, you'll have for sure access yeah. to, to a great medicine. Yeah. Uh, in both in both ways yeah but, and and the amount of english that 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 the doctors spoke um because you know you i speak portuguese but you want to be able to be tell people very clearly in your own language what you're feeling yeah. or what's happening or some of your history and it was amazing it was just absolutely incredible how easy it was and and how people were willing just to to switch over with the languages there was never any problem uh, yeah. This is this is a beautiful thing in this country. I think it's really common for people to speak an acceptable English. Yeah, yeah. They, I think, I think in general people speak an okay to good English. So we got used to watch movies and series and everything in English with subtitles, and that's a great way yeah. to learn. And and then the welcoming people are just friendly here, you know. Yeah, so yeah. they're happy to try they make, and, make and an help. Effort. They make an effort. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Exactly. You're a dentist, but you're also a rugby player. How many teeth have you knocked out of yourself or in others in your mm -hmm. years of playing? To be honest, in myself, none. Oh, that's good. In thank God. Which is amazing because you play twelve, yeah. which is quite a quite a high contact position. Yeah, but luckily, and I'm gonna be honest with you, I should not be saying this, but I didn't use a mouth guard for like ten years. I never used a mouth guard as well. <laughs> I could because I could. I, 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 when I started playing, I played hooker, and you need a call for the lineouts. Yeah. And then I was captain as well, so I was having to give and and I couldn't ever yeah. make proper calls it's with the gum guard in. So I just <laughs> got rid of it, but I got a nice chip on my tooth because of that because I'm not wearing a gum guard. Yeah, you can't be a dentist and have broken teeth. It wouldn't work. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> Uh, what kind of of image that will pass to the to your patients? Exactly, exactly. So now you wear a gum guard, right? Yes. Okay, so you've got a bit of English background, you've got a bit of Irish background, and then the Portuguese, born in Portugal. So I mean, good combination of rugby talent there potentially, you know, in the, in the DNA. All my life in in Portugal, born and raised. Um, all of my friends, teammates, and everything, all Portuguese. All my coaches, most of it, most of them, not yeah. their coaches, but. Most of them were, were Portuguese, and I think, uh, yeah, it comes from the... And you've probably seen Portuguese Portuguese rugby games, and our DNA just is just that. You guys are the, only the second Portuguese team to to qualify for a Rugby World Cup. Um, the last time was 2007. Um, it's just an incredible achievement, Thomas. T tell us a little bit, because it was an amazing story how it all happened. Uh, a little bit of luck, a lot of hard work. Um, yeah. But yeah, tell us about how it, how it all happened. Tell us about that qualifying process. Everything started in 2019. That's when Patrice Lajisque just came in. Uh, a lot of young kids uh, coming from the coming from the under 20s uh, national team 
we I think one of the bases from our team, and I think we can look this uh, in perspective, we have three different groups in our team. We have uh, the kids that come from the successful, really successful uh, under 20s. So we have uh, the generation from uh, Rafael Storti, Rodrigo Marta, um, even the um, with the the generation of João Granat and David Valles, uh, and, and then you have the older guys like myself, uh, like Duarte Diniz, like Rafael Simões, uh, and then you have and this is a really really important part of our team that you have the players who come from France and they were born in France but have a Portuguese uh, ancestry ancestry. Yeah. Ancestry. Yeah. yeah, ancestry. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, ancestry. Our biggest uh, victory was in Caldas as well. Against the Netherlands, I think. Against no, against uh, Czech Republic, I think. Okay. Wow. Uh, Caldas is a is a is a is a is a good spot to play. Yeah, exactly. For the national team. Mm -hmm. Um, what do you think the world is going to learn uh, about Portuguese people when they see us at a at a rugby World Cup? People know that Portugal play, plays with passion. Passion. Portugal play play for their country, Portugal play for their families, for their for people back home, and that's and that's how that's how the the image that we wanna wanna pass. We wanna pass that we we have our this DNA of 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 fighters. Uh, I would say that. Um, but yeah, but after that, we we just wanna we want to show a a good rugby and to show that. I don't want to. It's it's hard sometimes to to not compare us to to the two thousand and seven generation, uh, but we want to to get there and compete uh, at every game. What's one thing that you want people to remember and take away from our conversation? Just one thing. First of all, come and play rugby. Support rugby uh, in Portugal for sure. Uh, apart from that, it's just. It's just that when you, I think when you when you work hard uh, for the things you want, and you when you when you are able to to make sacrifices and efforts uh, for the the things you we, you want to reach, I think every everything is possible. Sometimes it might sound as a bit of a of a cliche, um, but I really I really uh, believe it. So yeah, work hard. Awesome. Thank you so much for being on the podcast, Tomas. It's been a pleasure. Thank you very much. It's been a pleasure. And I'm going to let you call it. Can I? Yeah. And that's a wrap. So thank you once again to Tomaj. And thank you to all of you for listening. Please subscribe, share with your friends, give us a thumbs up, and please leave a comment or a review. We always love to hear from you. Don't forget, Portugal The Simple Life also has a magazine, so download it. It's for free. We'll be back next week with a brand new episode. And as we say in Portugal, Forza. Welcome to The Simple Life.